What's going on everyone? It's a very sick though getting better Ozzy from OzTalks Hardware and lately I've received several questions pertaining to how to build a budget gaming computer during the current state of inflated computer component prices. In case you are unaware, computer component prices have skyrocketed the last six months, specifically SSD prices, video card prices, and DDR4 memory prices. With that being said, I've had difficulty recommending certain builds because of these absurd price changes, but for those of you who are willing, I think I have an alternative that is better than waiting aimlessly for deals or just brute forcing it and then picking up the components at their current price. But before I do that, let's go over all of the options available for you. One, you can brute force your way through this awful time and make the most of current prices. Buy the fastest components for the prices available and go with that. Totally okay. Two, you can actively deal hunt and purchase components as you go. Sites such as Build a PC Sales on Reddit and Slick Deals find the deals for you. You just need quick reflexes and a ready wallet to utilize them. And lastly, you can peruse the used market and purchase older components. And I bet you can already tell which one I'm going to be recommending. Yep. I'm going to be recommending the last one, number three. Now, I already have a video detailing how to build a $300 gaming computer on a tight budget, and that formula fits the third option very well. Buy a used pre-built computer, upgrade the power supply, and purchase a dedicated video card. Unfortunately, in my follow-up video, I had compatibility issues with the RX 460 and the pre-built computer's motherboard. I ended up solving the issue but not without days of troubleshooting and searching for a solution. So if you do not want to deal with a potential headache, I have another option for you. Just build the computer from scratch. I love this option because it gives you great performance for a cheaper price. You just sacrifice some newer technologies like certain input-output standards and DDR4 memory for instance, but you still have a very viable upgrade path and you're not losing much performance when you don't have those newer features. So here are my cheaper used alternatives that will perform just as well as the brand new counterparts. As far as processors go, I am a big advocate for picking up older Intel processors. I don't recommend going the AMD route because you will get way more for your money by picking up an older generation Intel processor than a non-Zen AMD based CPU. Fortunately enough, eBay retailers sell inexpensive i5 such as this i5-3470. An Ivy Bridge i5 costs around 60 USD and will provide stock Ryzen 3 performance for a fraction of the cost. Another great processor option includes the Xeon 1230 series for the mainstream socket. These are essentially locked i7s without integrated graphics. They generally hover around $110 on eBay, the same price as a Ryzen 3, but you also gain double the threads. The greatest benefit that stems from a locked i5 or a Xeon purchase includes the cheap motherboards for their socket. Budget LGA 1155 or 1151 motherboards still go for around $45 shipped, and even Z77, Z87, and Z97 motherboards float in the upper 70s if overclocking fits your fancy. Another fantastic benefit of choosing older components include that you avoid absurd RAM prices. 8GB of DDR4 memory currently sits around 70 to 80 bucks at its lowest level. For that same price, you can purchase 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM at some retailers, and for almost half the price, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. The minor performance differences between DDR4 and DDR3 usually appear in minimum frame rates, frame consistency in games, and video editing fluidity. Otherwise, unless the CPU somewhat depends on memory speed and latency, you will not notice a difference. Next up, we have storage drives. If you want to save money while maintaining reliability, used hard drives are the way to go. Most eBay retailers sell their hard drives with about a year and a half to two and a half years of constant use on them. This means that you have about two to three more years of constant use on the hard drives on average, equating to about two and a half to possibly four and a half years left in its life expectancy. The hard drive I picked up is around $20 shipped on eBay for a terabyte of space, a no-brainer in my opinion. Generally speaking, one terabyte drives go for around 30 bucks, so I did get a bit lucky here, so keep that in mind. And lastly, we have the video card. Now, I don't have a clear-cut answer to the mining epidemic, but combined with my previous tips and an upcoming tip, I think I have a few options that could alleviate some of the market's pressure on consumers. If you can, look for video cards from previous generations. They still perform well enough, 
their respective companies still support them enough to the point where they don't hinder performance or games, and they're usually at discounted prices. For example, this GTX 780 essentially performs better than the GTX 1050 Ti, yet the seller has listed it for only 120 bucks. That's an inexpensive way to garner GTX 1050 Ti performance. Browse any local classifieds and write its hardware swap to exhaust all of your options to find any kind of used video cards that can meet your gaming needs. In the case that used video cards aren't exactly an option for your region, my previous tip should have saved you enough money to the point where you can pick up a more expensive video card and still have at least the same performance for uh, the price or something better. Allow me to explain through an example. Here's a cookie cutter $400 gaming PC in the US. It features a Pentium G4560, a GTX 1050, and 8GB of DDR4 memory. In order to save money, I even used the $20 one terabyte hard drive that I talked about earlier. The total hovers around 400 and offers solid 1080p gaming at low to medium settings. Here's a $400 anti-mining apocalypse used build. It features the Xeon 1230V1, a GTX 780, 8GB of DDR3 memory, and 1TB of space. It performs better and you even save money. But that example is a little far-fetched as the GTX 780 will not stay at its price of $120 for a very long time. Here's an example with a $500 budget without using any kind of used video cards. The brand new $500 gaming PC features a Ryzen 3 1200 with a B350 motherboard, and you can save about 10 bucks by going A320, a GTX 1050 Ti, 8 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, and the used one terabyte hard drive to save money. My used $500 gaming PC features the same Xeon 1230, a GTX 1060 3 gigabyte, 8 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, and the one terabyte hard drive. Again, this will perform better and you save money. Keep in mind that both of these used variants could be slightly cheaper if I chose an i5 instead of a Xeon. Just some food for thought. But enough of all of this theoretical testing. If you guys want to see actual benchmarks of the $400 computers that I just compared, then I will order the parts and I will put them together and then I will benchmark them against each other. And then that will make it much easier for you, a viewer, to choose which route that you want to take. Like I said, if you guys are interested, let me know down in the comments below and I will order all of these parts, put them together and make the build. But that's it for this video, guys. If you guys found it helpful, then leave a like. And if you loved it, share and subscribe because I have a lot of videos coming out just like this one in the near future. Until next time, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you.